Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. So just before this video, I had posted my release and review video of the Trinity Stamps, like third birthday release. And I was very excited, very overwhelmed. But one of the first main ideas I had was I wanted to do a rainbow scene using all these little images from the It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood set. I, I just, I had to start with this because, yeah, I was very much channeling uh, Laura Basson because I'm sure most of you, just from seeing the image of my card, like, it just makes you think of her. Like, she's the queen. The queen of all things rainbow and her, like, clean and simple style, etc. Highly recommend. Laura Basson. She also goes by Laura Fedora. Yeah, she's got Instagram and YouTube and all the things. Love it. Love her videos. Love her cards. So, like I said, definitely channeling her with this. And all I was doing is I just went through my card stocks and just grabbed a bunch of random scraps in rainbow colors. And I am stamping a ton of the images from the set. This is a great big set. It's like a four by nine set or something like that. And I'm stamping the images onto these card stocks with clear embossing ink. So I'm using my anti-static powder tool first. I'm using my Misty because I'm flipping the images around as well because I thought, again, why not? Why not do a couple at a time? This is definitely one though where if you wanted to do like a ton of cards, cause you could just keep stamping the image, you know, fill up each piece of cardstock with that one image, because again, it's simple. So I would stamp the image and then coat it with detail white embossing powder and then melt it with my heat tool. And I had a rough idea before I started, you can kind of see them right along the bottom of the screen there. I had lined up the stamps I wanted to use from the set and I kind of lined them up in the same um, size of a slimline card front. So I had a rough idea. I was like, okay, I have this many images. They're going to fit kind of like this. And then I was like, okay, so then I need this many pieces of cardstock, like this many colors. So I did a bit of like mental planning roughly, but as usual, flying by the seat of my pants. <laughs> so I had that rough idea and then I just kind of went along and started the stamping. So that's basically all I did. And I still went in rainbow order because again, it's habit. <laughs> I don't know. Um, on a few spots, if I didn't use enough of my anti powder tool, I just use a dry paintbrush to brush off random little strays of embossing powder before I melt it with my heat tool. Just thought I'd mention that. And then of course, this is all sped up because it's just the same thing over and over again. I would just take a stamp and a corresponding just color of cardstock, anti-static powder tool, ink up stamp with clear ink, stamp it, coat it with embossing powder, melt. And I just kept going until I had all of the images that I wanted and all the colors I wanted. And some, a couple of the things like the post office boxes, like the little mailboxes, those I did a couple of because that way I'm gonna be able to kind of fill out my little rainbow, which you'll see in a minute. So once I've got, all of my images stamped and heat embossed. And since I did two of everything, I'm just gonna take my scissors and cut everything apart because they're all like on these same scraps. This is just gonna speed up my process of die cutting because I'm basically gonna die cut everything at once because I've got my big Spellbinders Platinum machine, which has the, they're like six by nine plates or whatever. Um, and I can basically I die cut everything at once and then do the second set all at once and then the last few that I had doubles of. So this again, just speeds up the process. And all the big chunks and scraps, again, I keep all my scraps just with my sleeves of cardstock because I reach for scraps before I reach for anything else because of die cutting, things like this, etc. I don't cut into a new like full sheet of cardstock unless I absolutely have to. And nine times out of 10, I don't <laughs> because I just have a ton of scraps. So this is a good way to use up said scraps too, you know, cause I just had tons of them. So I've got all the coordinating little wafer dies and I am taping them all into place. I just use my little spellbinders tape, washi tape works too, that sort of stuff. The purple tape, the easy C tape, all those things. I'm just taping the dies into place so that they don't move. That also saves me a ton of time cause there's nothing worse than trying to get wafer dies on multiple die cuts, you know, to stay when you're running them through a machine. 
So I'm just taping everything in place with that tape and then I'm going to place them all on my die cutting plate and die cut everything in one pass and then I'll just repeat the process. So then I'll have all my little die cuts all ready to go. So everything is die cut. My card bases are actually the Simon Says Stamp like pre-cut and pre-scored. I had ordered a couple packs of these forever ago, forgot I had them and then pulled them out when I was making this card and I was like, yes, this saves me a little bit of time. So I have my card base just laying here. The one along the top there, nothing's adhered. Again, I just kind of laid everything out sort of how I wanted it to be. And then I'm just kind of following that little visual guide to adhere. So that's also kind of one of the perks of doing a couple at once. This way I can, you know, use the pieces for one to figure it all out without gluing anything down and then adhere the second one. And then I'll go back and adhere everything else. And to actually adhere everything, I'm using a combo of thin 3D foam squares and regular 3D foam squares. So some images are popped up a little higher and then the other ones are popped up just a little bit, you know, just to give it that dimension that I love. And of course I'm putting everything in rainbow order. So, you know, I've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, pink. And then I tuck in the little sun and the little clouds that I just did with a really pale yellow and a really pale blue cardstock. So once I've got all of that adhered, this whole time when I was making these, I wasn't sure what I was going to do about the sentiment. And then I ended up deciding to just use the little sentiment from the set that says it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. So I grabbed a scrap of black cardstock, same process, anti-static powder tool, going to stamp the sentiment with the clear embossing ink. I'm going to move that cardstock up so I can stamp a second one. And the nice thing with this is I didn't have to worry about getting the sentiment like straight on the cardstock because there is a little rectangle wafer die in the coordinating die set as well. So that way I can die cut the sentiment. Love it. <laughs> like I've said in some, like as I'm getting older, like I've got astigmatism in my eyes now and just the eyeballing and the getting things straight just doesn't work as well as it used to. I used to be so good at it. I'm not anymore. So I like coordinating wafer dies for all the things, including sentiments. It just makes my life easier. So die cut those sentiments and then I'm going to pop those onto the card and again trying to eyeball it Eesh. so I just grabbed a ruler and that way I could see exactly where this like the middle of the card was so four and a quarter inches because this is eight and a half inches long this card front so I used the ruler just so I you know roughly and I'm still eyeballing it doesn't need to be perfect but just so it's not completely you know off to one side and then pop that sentiment on with the foam squares that I just trimmed down, like trimmed them into little strips basically. So did that and then use the ruler again to give me that visual of where the middle was. And then I can just pop that sentiment right along the bottom of this card front. So because this is a slumline card, this is three and a half inches by eight and a half inches. Also why I want to use this set and like the size of the houses and everything, like it was just perfect. You know, it was all just meant to be. I loved it. And then for the inside, I'm just using the supporting script sentiments, which <laughs> FYI, when I talked about these in the release review, I'm like, oh, this is such a cute set. I didn't realize like that's literally what it is, this supporting script. These work really well with like the big word die cuts. There's a few that make good stand on like this sentiment. I stamped it with Audrey Blue ink that just says you make me smile. But yeah, I thought I'd mention that to you. So anywho. After I stamp the sentiment, I'm just adding, these are actually just scraps of some rainbow pa paper that I'm going to show in a minute because I'm going to make coordinating envelopes. Um, these were from the Lawn Fawn Rainbow, I think the Really Rainbow, I think it was the Really Rainbow pack that came out forever ago. I think Lawn Fawn still sells this paper. I'm not sure. I know Simon's the Stamp carries it in the 6x6. Six six. I need to get them to get it back in the 12x12 12 12, if they can because it's wonderful. But any pattern paper will work. I'll link to some Beetlebug 12 by 12 that I love as well. Because any 12 by 12 paper, honestly. But I've shown this in many videos. I used Trinity's Slimline Envelope Builder wafer die set and a piece of 12 by 12 pattern paper. And you cut the base. And then the long flap you die cut twice. And then there's two different little shorter flaps, a round one and a squared off one. So I die cut up those. You fold on the score lines and then you apply adhesive just to the flaps and you assemble it like I'm showing here. I'm using liquid glue, like just craft tacky glue because I'm very comfortable with this glue. Something like score tape, red line tape, that works fabulously as well. I've shown in other videos using that. 
I'm just honestly more comfortable with the liquid glue and I know how much I need to use or not use. So it's not oozing out everywhere. But if you're not comfortable with liquid glue, totally use score tape, red line tape, etc. I just, I like the liquid glue because it gives me those few seconds of wiggle room. Because again, lining things up, it's getting harder. <laughs> so I just use thin amounts of glue, not lots. Because if you're using too much, it's going to ooze out everywhere. And you're, you, you won't have an envelope in the end. You'll just have a piece of paper with, you know, that's all just glued together. So I repeated this process with another one of those Lawn Fawn rainbow papers. I uh, just cause. What would have looked really cute with this set though too is one of the doodle bug like black polka dot papers or black stripe papers. That would look really cute with a little rainbow neighborhood card like this. And I almost did that but then I saw my you know rainbow papers in my stash and forced myself to die cut them. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were just fun regardless you know even when I actually use my papers I know I know anyway I made both my envelopes super super simple Th this is definitely one of those ones like after you do it just once it's so easy they come together so quickly it no thought needed whatsoever so I assembled both of my envelopes I leave the round flap with nothing on it because I will glue that down when it's time to actually send the card so I just leave it as is or if I was giving to someone uh, like to use the card themselves I would put like red line tape or score tape on that flap and leave the backing paper on there so a person you can just peel it off and adhere it so that's my video for the moment as always I'll post links in the description box below the video as well as to my blog to everything I used so you can check that out below if you're interested stay tuned I will have more videos coming thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing thumbs up and commenting all of it I very much appreciate it and I will see you all very soon in the next video bye <laughs>